Hi, I'm David Baker today. I'm starting a big bookcase. And in the first part, I do all this. A year ago, I made this dresser. When Jean-Francois shared my video, one of his friends asked me if I could make him a bookcase. So I drew this. A big bookcase. A little bit shaker style. He loved it. So I was able to get the wood. A good part of this bookcase will be made out of birch plywood. I began by asking a bit of help from René to get this plywood inside the shop. Because I will need my workbench, we move it all again onto saw horses. <laughs> yes, these sheets are quite heavy. It's all Baltic birch plywood with slices of local birch on both sides. This plywood is so pretty. I won't be able to use my lathe before it's all finished. I was also forced to repile the wood for my TV lift but I also need solid birch. I bring all the wood I will need for the frames of the sides of the bookcase on the workbench, mark it and start to prepare it. When I have one face and one edge straight, I rip everything a bit bigger and make all the pieces of the frames the right size. There are quite a lot of pieces to prepare. When they are finally cut to the proper dimensions, it's time to cut a groove in each of them for the plywood panels. All done. But I need to cut a stub tenon on all the rails. First thing to do is cut all the rails. Next, cut the cheek on one side for all of them. Here it's more obvious that one side is half an inch and the other <laughs> way less. Using one cutoff as a guide, I lower the dado stack to the right height and cut a test. Perfect. I just need to cut all the other cheeks. Now that I have all the frames, it's time to fill them with plywood. But I have mm, one little problem. In some places, I lifted up the wood so the bottom uh, is not even. 
I need to fix this. But I'm sure it's okay. I still don't take any chances and dry assemble all the frames. Since I'm satisfied, I can measure the size of the plywood. <laughs> not too difficult when the depth is not too complicated. I ask again for help and we cut all the panels. After cutting the first one, I check if I have the right dimensions. Since I'm happy with it, I cut the next one. Now it's time to take care of the top panels. The edge of the plywood mm, is a bit messy. Since I want a nice surface to ride on the fence, I sand it smoother. Then cutting the first panel, is a charm. I try it in place and just like last time, it's perfect. It's time to cut the last one. Before gluing all of this together, it's wiser to sand everything that could be difficult to sand once everything is glued. Then I glue the four frames. Since the panels are made of plywood, I also glue them to the solid wood. I try not to use too much glue. <laughs> but you know me, it's difficult for me. <laughs> so before the glue gets too hard, I scrape the excess where sanding mm, is almost impossible. Now I just need to wait for the glue to dry. But meanwhile, I can take care of the long stretchers. Instead of adding an extra support, I just asked for help from René again. But when I try to plane the other side, I have another big dust collector problem. The board is stuck in the planer. I threw in the towel and brought the dust collector beside the planer. But my troubles are not over. Look closely, the hose is plugged just at the entrance of the dust collector. Yes, really plugged. All this because of the safety grid. It's time to fix this. Now the chips are flying inside the bag. We can continue planning. To make sure the edge is straight, I rip the boards with the track saw. These are all the pieces for the front of the stretchers. But I need more wood because I need thicker stretchers. The top stretchers are quite easy because both layers have the same width. But for the larger bottom, I use this opportunity to make the rabbit at the same time. When I'm done, I have to wait for all this to dry. Then, rip the bottom to the right height. For the top one, I remove the glue bumps before planing them to their final height.
Now, the four stretchers have the right height, but they are too thick compared to the ones on the frames. I fix this right now. Done. It's time to cut them to the right length. Now that it's done, I need to cut the excess wood on all the frames. Here's an idea of the size of this bookcase. I have to do the joinery now. Everything will be held together with dominoes. And here's the test that I've used. I made a test piece because all the references are done with the base of the domino mortiser. And for the frame, I lift it a bit. I also use the aligning tabs. Here, the eight mortises are done, but on the lower stretcher, I want two dominoes. Those are done with six millimeter mortises. Then it's time to take care of the stretchers. All the mortises are done, but I need to drill more mortises for the knockdown assembly. Yes, all of this will mostly be made of separate pieces, and to do so, I've used special hardware. This way, the delivery will be much easier. I will do a separate episode on the knockdown joinery I've used on this project. Maybe this would be of interest to one or two of you. Now that I have a base, it's time to make the inside structure. The first thing to do is the drawer's box. After cutting a strip, I check if it's the right size for the bottom. Since I'm satisfied, I cut the bottom for the center part and prepare the rest of the plywood, so I will be able to glue this strip of solid birch on it. But it's a bit too thick. Now that it has the right thickness, I can glue the strip to the plywood. This is not too difficult. I just have to make sure that the wood is flush to the plywood and add a bunch of clamps. I remove all the glue I can before it's too hard. Now I just need to wait for the glue to dry. The next morning, with a scraper, I make sure the wood is really flush with the plywood and give the final sanding to this panel. When I'm done, I cut both sides. I begin with a straight cut. Take the height directly with the stretcher and make the next cut. But I'm not done yet, because I still need to remove the top corners.
Now I can try the panels in place. Since it's perfect, I mark the places where to drill the mortises and drill them. This also needs two top stretchers. I cut them and check if it's the right length. Then from the inside, I mark where to drill the mortises for the stretchers. Since the marks are not referenced from an edge, I need to create a temporary edge. I transfer the marks to it and drill the mortises. When they are drilled on the stretchers, that's the result. But before gluing this, I sand every surface that will be inside this case. Then it's time to glue this together. This is not too difficult. I just need to check if it's square. When the glue is dry, we can slide this part in place. But I also need a bottom on both sides. I cut one side just a bit longer and check if this cut is really the same angle as the case. Since it is, I cut the other side, but a bit longer. Then I check if I have the right angle. Since I do, I cut it to the right length. I have to do the same thing for the other side. When it's done, it's possible to retighten the joinery and the bottom of the bookcase is all cut. But this will need to be fixed in place and it will be shown in the second part about how I made this bookcase on the woodpecker.